Just before Christmas, I taught a lesson called Ungluing the Shoulders. And in this week's lesson, we're going to be looking at another Feldenkrais lesson that can really help to mobilise the whole area of the upper arm and the shoulder. The lesson I'm going to teach today is a Feldenkrais lesson that was originally called Rolling the Fists. There are quite a few variations of this lesson. The lesson I'm going to teach is pretty much done lying on the back. So uh, please begin by lying down on your back. And just take a moment to notice the overall contact that you make into the floor. And then begin to just do a, a, a gentle movement of just rolling the head a little bit to the right and to the, to the left. Really just giving yourself permission just to roll the head just to an easy range. So it may be that you just get this far to the right and this far to the left before you begin to experience any kind of sense of pull or discomfort and that's really really fine just <clears throat> be very kind to yourself and just give yourself permission just to explore what is an easy range for you and whether you notice a difference in terms of how you roll the head to the right compared to the left and it may be the difference that you can't necessarily put a name to or, or describe very well but the, the fact that you notice the difference is is enough now i'm i'm choosing to do the lesson with my glass glasses on and that's because i need to see the the camera but if if you're at home and you do wear glasses and you're able to it's probably a good idea to put the glasses to one to one side once you've just explored rolling the head, then just take a moment to notice how the shoulders and the arms make contact into the floor. Are your shoulder blades actually resting down into the floor? Or maybe they're lifted away from the floor, which is quite quite a common, common thing. And then notice how much of your arms are actually down in contact with the floor. Is your upper arm making contact? Is your forearm making contact? Are the palms? Maybe it's just the tips of the fingers and the tips of the elbows making contact. And, and the purpose of these questions is not to enter in, into any kind of judgment about how, you, how you've chosen to place the arms. It's just to give you a sense of how it is that you're resting when you initially lay down on the floor and then it also gives us a reference point to come back to at the end of the lesson to see whether anything is different in terms of the um, how you're resting at the end of the lesson compared to the beginning. Now, for this lesson, you're going to you need to be able to stretch your arms out at shoulder height and take a moment just to check both left and right to make sure the arms really are at shoulder height rather than above the line of the shoulder or, or below. It's always worth just, just checking that. And in this lesson, you can keep the legs long initially, but um, it may be that you'll feel more comfortable having the legs, legs bent up. Certainly for me, if I bring the legs to standing, I feel less of a pull in the lower back area. So you have your arms out at shoulder height, and then form soft fists with your hands. So I just curl the fingers as if I'm holding a baby's hand. My thumbs are resting to the outside of my fingers. And once you've done that, then just begin to roll your fists a little bit upwards and then come back. So I'm just thinking, if I think of my thumb, um, uh, to start off pointing towards the ceiling, the direction is um, towards the floor behind me. So I'm just rolling the fists, both fists upwards, 
and then I come back to the starting position. Just doing this a number of times, just to get used to the movement, and notice as you do this, what's happening with the breath. So are you holding the breath? Are you breathing in and out as you're, able, as you're doing this? And trying just to keep any unnecessary tension out of the jaw or the neck or the eyes. So you're just rolling the fists a little bit upwards and then bringing them back to their starting position. And as you do this movement, see if you can get a sense of what's actually moving as you rolling as you're rolling the fists. So is the movement happening just perhaps in the wrists? Are your forearms involved in the movement? Are the elbows involved in the movement? Do you sense the elbows turning? What about the upper arm? And maybe you feel something in the collarbones, these two long thin bones here, as you just do this movement. Now pause and then see if you can begin to roll the fists in the other direction. So this time it's as if I'm giving the thumbs down. I'm rolling the fists down in the sense of the direction of my feet. So I'm just rolling the fists in the other direction and I'm just trying to notice where the movement is happening in terms of my arms. So I can sense my forearms turning as my fists roll downwards and a little bit of movement in my upper arm, a little bit of movement in the elbow. But it may be that for you, if you've had an injury on one side, it may be very different to the right compared to the left. And just as you're doing this movement, check that you're, if you can, that you're able to keep the fists nice and soft, that you're not tensing into the fists to, to do this movement. Now, pause and then begin to roll the fists a little bit up, come back and then roll the fists a little bit down. So you're just exploring now both directions. Maybe one of those directions seems a little bit easier for you, a little bit more available. Just gently checking the ease of the movement and the comfortable range. And then um, pause, bring the arms back down by your side, rest the legs if you, if you need to. And if you'd like to, just roll the head again a little bit to the right and to the left. And then um, please, if you're bringing the legs back to standing, bring the legs back to standing. And then um, begin to do a movement with the legs standing of just gently um, pressing down through the feet in order to lift the pelvis a little bit off the off your mat or off the floor and then put it back down. So I'm just gently pressing down through my feet to see if I can just lift my pelvis a little bit off the, off the mat and then putting it back down. And once you've done that a few times just check or ask yourself have you put the feet in the right place for you. So some people, um, you, you may have chosen to place the feet quite far away from the bottom, uh, you might have jammed them right into the bottom. Um, see if you can just experiment a few times to try and find the place for the feet where you're really supported in this movement by your skeleton. And then as you begin to press down just to gently explore lifting the pelvis, notice if you can what or how do you sense yourself using the feet. So for some people it may be that you're in fact pressing down through the just the little toe side of the feet to lift the pelvis 
or it may be that your tendency is to kind of press down through the big toe side of the foot and to, to lift the pelvis and not really using the outside edge of the foot. See, if I press down through the little toe side, what tends to happen is my knees flare out to the side. If I press down through the big toe side of the foot, my knees tend to, to drop in. But there's a, a, um, there's a possibility of using the whole of the foot to support you as you lift and lower the pelvis. Uh, and I'm not trying to lift the pelvis as high as I can. I'm really just looking to see if I can do this in a way that doesn't cause me to hold the breath. And that I could do a num number of times. Pause after you've done it. If you need to rest the legs, that's absolutely fine. I encourage you to do so if you, if you need to. But then bring the legs back to standing. And then um, try just pressing down through one foot. So if I just press down through the, or main, I should mainly through one foot, I press down through the left foot, what tends to happen is my, the right hand side of my lower back comes down and the left side is lifted away. And if I favor the right foot, it's, it's the opposite. The left side of the lower back comes down. In other words, the angle of the push has changed depending on which foot I'm favouring. So, once you've explored that, then see if you can begin to use the feet more or less evenly to press down, to lift and lower the pelvis. It's almost as though I'm using this push through the feet and um, lifting of the pelvis if you, if you take it slowly and, and gently, you'll notice there's a, almost a push that takes place into the spine that can go all the way up towards the head. And interestingly for me, I can feel definitely my shoulder blades. It's almost as they're being pressed gently down, down into, the, into the mat. Okay, don't need to do too many of those because we're going to be doing more as part of the lesson. If necessary, please rest the legs. And then when you are ready, bring the legs back to standing. Take your arms out at shoulder height once more. Form your soft fists. And now this time, begin to lift the pelvis by pushing down through the feet and as you do that roll your fists upwards in the direction of the head and then come back so you're just gently pushing down into the feet to lift the pelvis and as you're doing that you're rolling the fists upwards and then coming back so again, just gently pressing down through the feet, rolling the fists upwards. And you may begin to sense as you do this that your the range of movement in the arms or the fists is a little bit further, just by lifting the pelvis as you roll the, the fists. Certainly I can feel now my elbows coming a little bit more off the floor as I do this and then you lower back down. Just do, you can do as many of these movements as you like or as few of these movements. It doesn't really matter how many, it's much more about the quality of the movement uh, and quality in the sense that you're just giving yourself time to make sure uh, you're just doing what's easy, you're not holding the breath, You've, you're not doing it with any kind of sense of ambition of how far to roll the fist, but just exploring each time the, this movement. Yeah. Now, pause, rest the legs, bring the arms back down by your side for a moment, and 
Again, just take a moment to notice the contact of the shoulders into the floor and roll the head again a little bit left and a little bit right. And then when you are ready, bring the legs back to standing. Bring your fists or arms out again at shoulder height. And then just see what it's like to roll the fists now on their own. And whether maybe lifting the pelvis has helped to increase the range of the of the rolling. Certainly I can again I can feel how now more of my elbows are coming coming into the into the movement. And I can sense more perhaps participation in the area of my collarbones. Now, um, the next time you do this movement, try rolling your fists first, your arms, and then lift the pelvis, and then see once you've lifted the pelvis, are you able to roll the fists a little bit more in the direction of the head, and then come back. So, first of all, you try to roll your fists and then you lift the pelvis. I can feel that push going from here to here and then see, does that help me to roll the fists even more? And then I return the pelvis and the arms. So again, try rolling your fists in the direction of the head, lift the pelvis See if that enables you to roll them even a millimeter further and then come back. Just once more, so I roll my fists, lift the pelvis, see if I'm able to roll them a little bit more, come back with the arms and the, and the pelvis. And then once you've done that, keep the pelvis down and then just roll your fists downwards and upwards and see whether that movement has changed at all as a result of doing that variation. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Please take a rest. And then once you've rested, bring the legs back to standing. Take your fists out at shoulder height. And now begin to lift the pelvis and roll your fists upwards. See if you can, the lifting of the pelvis enables you to roll them a bit further. And now keep the fists rolled as they are, as they are, then lower the pelvis back down, keeping the arms where they are, and then return the fists. So you lift and lift the pelvis, roll the fists. See if you can keep the fists rolled to their comfortable maximum. And then you bring the pelvis back down and then return the fists. And again, so you lift the pelvis as you roll the fists. See if you can keep the fists rolled as you lower the pelvis and then return the arms. Once more, lifting, rolling, you keep the fists rolled and then you see, can you lower the pelvis and return the fist. And once you've done that a number of times, then just explore rolling the fist one way and rolling the other. And it's interesting, I can feel now more of my shoulder, my shoulder blade participating in this, in this movement. Please take a rest. Once you've rested, please bring your legs back to standing and then take your fists out at shoulder height again, just checking again left and right to make sure they are at shoulder height. 
And now this time, begin to again roll your fists downwards and then cut back. So you're just rolling them downwards in the direction of the feet. So I'm not so much sliding the hands, I'm just trying to roll the arms around their, look, their axis, and then I come back. Just rolling downwards and coming back. Now, I can sense as I just do this movement a number of times, uh, my fist turning I'll show you on my left arm, the elbow turning the upper arm, and I can also begin to feel a little bit of my shoulder rolling forward. Now, that may not be the case with you, it may be you're still just feeling it in the upper arm, that's absolutely fine, but just notice that. And, but I'm beginning to feel, as I roll my arms, this movement of the shoulder blades and the and in the collarbones. Now, pause. Pause, again, if you need to rest, please do so. But now, this time, I'm going to think of lifting my head, lifting my head as if I wanted to see my tummy button, and then rolling the arms. And then I return the arms and the head and shoulders back down. So, I think of lifting my head to look at my navel as I roll the arms down and then I come back and let the arms come back to their starting position. So, again I lift the head as I roll the arms and then I return the head and shoulders and the arms. And what perhaps you'll begin to notice that because of the lifting of the head, the shoulders, the shoulder blades roll forward and there's something about that that facilitates the rolling of the arms downwards and come back. Again, lift the head, don't struggle to do this and roll the arms downwards and then I come back with the arms and the arms and the head. In other words, when you lift the head, it helps to bring the shoulders forward. And when the shoulders come forward, I get a bigger range of motion in the in the rolling of the fists. So I'm going to try now um, lifting the head, rolling the fists down. You can see how my upper arms are cut away from the floor. Now I keep my arms where they are, and then I think of lowering my head back down, and then returning the arms back to their starting position. So again, I roll the arms down, lift the head. I try and keep my arms rolled, and then I bring the head back down, and then return the arms to their starting position. In other words, we begin to differentiate the lifting of the head and the neck muscles from the movement of the shoulder blades. So again, lift the head, roll the arms, try and keep the arms rolled, and then lower the head back down, and then return the arms to their starting position. So, you don't need to do too many of those. It's quite tough work to lift the head. It's quite certainly tough work on the abdominal muscles. But now, once you've tried it, then just explore what it's like now, just to roll the arms in one direction and then the other. And because of that, those variations, I can feel much more of a willingness now of my shoulders to be part of this movement of rolling the fist. Can you, can you see, I hope it's clear in the, on the camera, how when I'm rolling my fists downwards, my shoulders are rolling forwards, and as I roll my fists the other way, and I allow my shoulder blades to be part of that, that movement, it helps to roll the arms upwards and go both directions. Just good. Please rest. It's quite a nice sunny day here in Rutland, but it's very cold.
according to the weatherman, the wind is coming from Siberia. It certainly feels like that outside. But in the studio, thank goodness, it's nice and warm. Please bring your legs to standing when you're ready to continue. And then um, this time I'm going to see if we can combine some of these movements we've been looking at. So going to press down through the feet to roll the fists upwards and then lower the pelvis, roll the fists back and see if I can lift the head as I roll the, sh the fists downwards. And then I lower the head, bringing the up fists back to their starting position and I lift the head to roll the arms upwards. So I lift the head to roll the shoulder, the fists are up rather down, and I lift the pelvis to roll the arms upwards. In other words, by including the pelvis and the head, again it's helping me, hopefully it's helping you too, to begin to include this idea or this um, image of how the shoulders, the movement of the shoulders, is part of the rolling of the fists. Again, um, you don't need to do too many of the movements. Once you've done it, then just try again rolling your fists one direction and the other. And it's and it's interesting really because although the instruction in the original lesson is given in terms of the rolling of the fists, as the lesson builds up and we explore the variations you can begin to switch the focus, although I'm still rolling the fist, I'm really thinking how I can initiate this movement more from this area, my shoulders, shoulders, my, and my chest participating in the, in the movement. Please rock, rest, and Take a moment just to roll the head a little bit to the right and to the to the left. For me, I was feeling a niggle on the right side at the beginning of the lesson, but that seems to have gone away a bit now, which is nice. Please bring the legs back to standing if you're ready to continue. And then take your arms out, your fists out at shoulder height and then begin, to, we're going to mix up the, the movement so just to help confuse you but it's a typical Feldenkrais ploy to just kind of squeeze more goodness out of the lesson so begin to, this time as you roll the fists upwards see if you can lift the head and as you roll the fist downwards, put the head down, but lift the pelvis. So uh, as I roll the fists upwards, I lift the head. And then as I roll the fist downwards, I lift the pelvis. So separating the movement of the arms again from the movement of the pelvis and the head, or changing the pattern. And again, you don't need to do too many, so I'm lifting the head as I'm rolling the fist upwards. And I'm not lifting the head nearly as high, you can see. And as I roll the fist downwards, I lift the pelvis. Good. Again, you don't have to do too many of those, but um, rest when you need to. And then in resting, just again, notice how the shoulders are feeling the arm. Certainly, it feels, for me, a lot looser in this this area, which is great, great. Now, come back to having the arms out at shoulder height. And again, bring the legs to standing. And then just try again, rolling the arms, just the arms now, upwards and downwards. And see if you can fix, um, think of, the, again, initiating this movement more 
from the shoulder area, so in other words, more proximally, to use Feldenkrais's term, more proximal to your centre, that just roll it in the arms upwards and downwards. And now pause, and now begin to roll one fist up and the other fist down and then switch. So one fist is rolling up and one fist is rolling down. But as you do this, see if you can begin to include this idea of the shoulder and the collarbone um, joining in the movement. So it's almost as if your arms are a long towel and you're just wringing out the ends of the towel so that one collarbone, one shoulder, is doing something different from the other one as you're just wringing out the arms. Pause and please rest. And again, when you've rested to sufficiently, please bring your legs back to standing. Take your fists out at shoulder height. And then again, begin to do this alternate rolling. So one fist will roll up as one rolls down. And switch. And begin to roll the head and eyes to look towards one arm as you continue to roll the fists. And then notice, as you do this movement, which fist are you rolling the head and eyes to? So, normally, what happens, although it may be different for you, is that people roll the head and eyes towards the fist that's rolling up. Now, see if you can continue this movement of rolling one fist up and one fist down, but begin to allow the knees to tilt as part of this movement. Just gently from side to side. So my knees and my head are both rolling towards the fist that's rolling up. And I'm looking with my yeah, head and eyes towards the fist that's rolling up. And then see if you can, without disturbing the movement, without disturbing the flow of the movement, have the head and eyes looking towards the fist that's rolling down. So the head and eyes are looking towards now the fist that's rolling down, but the knees are still going towards the fist that's rolling up. Again, just checking, taking your time, that you're not holding the breath as you're doing this. Good. And then pause and rest. Please bring the legs back to standing. Take your arms out at shoulder height, your fists out at shoulder height, and then begin again this, alter, al is, uh, this alternating movement of one fist rolling up, one fist rolling down, beginning to roll the head and eyes and tilting the knees towards the fist that's rolling up. The fist that's rolling up. So you're just rolling the head and eyes, 
tilting the knees towards the fist that's rolling up. And then see again if without changing the quality or the flow of the movement, switching this so that the knees go to the fist that's rolling down, but your head and eyes are still looking towards the fist that's rolling up. So the knees are tilting towards the fist that's rolling down, but you're looking with the head and eyes towards the fist that's rolling up. Again, just if you need to take time to pause, think about this, please do so. But just see if you can stay with the variation. So the head and eyes are going towards the fist that's going up, but the knees are going towards the fist that's rolling down. Just checking that you're not holding the breath to do this. And then pause and take a rest. I love the way um, Feldenkrais uses these principles in his lesson. Uh, when the lessons get really wacky, wacky with the eyes going one way, head going other, other ways, knees going in one way. It really, it's almost to say you can feel the neuroplasticity taking place, the, the, the neurons wiring or together or breaking up old patterns. And um, yeah, and they're also great fun. I hope you think so. Please bring the legs back to standing. Take your fists out at shoulder height and begin again to roll one fist up, the other down. Going back to the first pattern where the knees and the head and eyes are rolling towards the fist that's ro tilting towards the fist that's turning up. And as you get used to this pattern again, going towards the fist that's rolling up, see if you can change it so that head and the knees oops, are going towards the fist that's rolling down. Oh, that's quite hard to do. So knees and head and eyes looking towards the fist that's rolling down. Again, if you need to slow it down, please do so. I could feel myself suddenly wanting to go back into the old pattern there, the first pattern. So again, take your time. Head and knees going towards the fist that's rolling down. And then pause once you've explored that. Just take a rest. And then please bring your legs back to standing. Take your fists out at shoulder height. Again, begin to go back to the, the, with the first pattern. So knees and head and eyes rolling towards the fist that's rolling up. So looking towards the fist that's rolling up, knees and head and eyes going in the same direction. And then see if you can have the eyes going in the opposite direction. So head and knees going towards the fist that's rolling up, but eyes looking in the opposite direction. And if you wear glasses like Neil Spectacles, you're doing this in Spectacles, glasses then try and find the corner of your eye with your eyes rather than the corner of the spectacles because they're maybe two very different things <laughs> and it's quite difficult to do it and talk at the same time that's okay good and if again one way of doing this is just to keep the eyes focused on a spot as this, on the ceiling if that helps you to differentiate the eye movements, 
from everything else. And pause. These variations can drive you crazy, really. So again, um, don't take them too seriously, um, but do try them because they're fun to work out and and fun in the sense that they really challenge some of your habitual ways of doing something. So, um, okay, one more variation before we uh, finish. So, um, keep your legs bent up, form your arms out at the side, your fists out at the side, go back to the first pattern of knees and head and eyes, looking towards the fist that's rolling up, checking the drawer is nice and soft, and then see if you can have the knees, <laughs> knees and the eyes going towards the fist that's rolling down, but the head towards the fist that's rolling up. So head towards the fist that's rolling up, but eyes and knees going towards the fist that's rolling down. Oh, I didn't really have to think about this one. So knees and eyes going together towards the fist that's rolling down, but head towards the fist that's rolling up. And just a few more. <laughs> and then rest. rest. Quite, uh, can be quite tiring some of these variations, really having to use your brain to work them out. So um, take a moment again just to notice the contact that you're making to the floor. Roll the head and eyes a little bit left, a little bit right. Bring the legs back to standing. And then just go back to the first exploration. Of just rolling your fist down and up. And just see whether that range has improved, whether you feel more freedom in your shoulders, freedom to join in this movement to facilitate the rolling of the fists. And then please rest, take a moment, you can sort of flop the shoulders around just to notice how the arms are resting into the floor now, whether you perhaps feel a little bit broader in the shoulders towards the floor. You get a sense of more freedom in that area. And then please bend the knees, roll to whichever side you like to come up to sit and then up to standing. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson, um, my variation of rolling the fists. Um, it always causes quite a few smiles in class when we explore some of those wackier variations. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you next time.